Well, greetings everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, as promised in my previous video, we're going to do a review of the uh, Tuskman Smart Digital Multimeter, the TM510, which is the companion product to the uh, TN213 non-contact voltage tester. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've not seen this before, and so we're just going to do a quick unboxing here. And uh, looks like we've got a nice case for this. That's quite unusual for the price of this unit, and a, and a very detailed uh, instruction manual, user manual here. And so we're going to look at that, and uh, let's just open this up. I like that it includes this. I can't believe they do this for the price. I think it's only $12, $11 maybe. Uh, I'll look it up and see, but uh, this is what we get. And uh, we'll open up the main unit here. And uh, it's a little smaller than I expected. Uh, it looks bigger, of course, on the advertisements but uh yeah that's uh quite a compact little unit let's go ahead and remove the protective coating here and uh looks like we've got a very simple unit to use and uh i'll go ahead and uh read the directions off camera and so we don't waste any time with that but uh also uh nice uh, name brand batteries which I've mentioned before uh, it's a lot better than some of the cheap batteries that only last about two or three days and in, in uh, most products you get and as also we've got a set of test leads here and uh, like pretty nice, nice flexible leads. Uh, I suppose the length on them is pretty good. It looks like to be about two feet in total length. And as I said, we'll uh, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, go off camera here, and I'll read the instruction manual, and we'll come back and we'll uh, get into uh, the review of this device. And uh, if you want to stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you a link where you can get it even cheaper than advertised. So I'll be right back. Well, I've read through the instruction manual, which is quite extensive for, uh, for as automatic as this is. You don't need to do a whole lot to it, but there are some features we'll go over and I'll show you how to uh, uh, use the uh, special buttons on here. Now, uh, let's first things first, we'll go ahead and put batteries in it and we'll just peel off the case here. And uh, there's a nice rubber case. I do wish they would have put a little bit of a kickstand on that so it could stand up, but uh, for that price, I guess you don't expect too much in that area. But uh, we'll put the batteries in. I notice that the uh, screw is not a captive screw, so you have to be careful you don't lose that. And I'll just lift that up, and I already uh, put some of my favorite batteries in here, some uh, Energizer Lithiums, Ultimates. Uh, I just feel they'll last a lot longer, and uh, there's no danger of them leaking like there are with uh, regular alkaline batteries that came with it. Which is a uh, it's a good battery as, as far as brands go, as long as you don't get a counterfeit one. But uh, uh, I, I prefer leaving the alkalines behind and going with a lithium. Uh, you can use rechargeable batteries in this. I've tried that and it does work, but uh, the only difference is that uh, the built-in light is a little bit dimmer with the rechargeables. Let's go ahead and put it in the case. And uh, again, is a nice feature. 
and we'll prepare the test leads here. Now these do have caps on them. I've already taken those off, but uh, they're just in there. You just have to pull them off. And it's a fairly common uh, test lead anymore. He, even my uh, must tool here will will use these, so they fit in just about any multimeter. So we'll go ahead and put those in here. And we've got it in our little chassis stand now, so we can uh, film it properly. And uh, first thing uh, I want to show you is that uh, the main power button is right in the middle. You just hold it down for a few seconds. And it comes up in the auto mode. And you'll notice the uh, pointer is hunting for whatever you want to read with it. And uh, that's all you have to do right now is if you want to use this just uh, in continuity mode, you short the leads and you'll hear the alert go off that you have continuity. And I have a few precision resistors here that we'll try out. See how accurate it is. That is a 60K ohm. You see the little K right there, 60,000. Let's try one that's a little bit smaller here. There's a 28K, 1% tolerance. So 27.9899. Very good. And here's a little lower value one. I like the rings they put on the edge of the probe here so they don't slip off as easy. Okay, that's 100 ohms. It's 0.1K according to the meter, which would translate to 100 ohms, 1% 1 tolerance. So you can see that the uh, meter is quite accurate on that range. So I think we're good on resistance. Now without changing a thing, uh, Let's uh, see how accurate the voltage is. Now I have a uh, precision voltage reference here that uh, I'll set up. We'll turn it on and right now it's set to 10 volts and we'll just plug it in there and see if this uh, reads anywhere near 10 volts. And you can see it's uh, right on the money. So this is a very accurate meter, even though the book says it's 1% uh, accuracy on uh, all the DC scales, 1.5% on the AC scales. And so that's, that's very good. I'm impressed. That's nice. And the other thing I'm impressed with is the speed of it. As soon as I put the lead on it, it, it reads the voltage. And it keeps it for a moment. Now, uh, if you want to keep it for a longer period, you can press the hold button and you see the H came on and now it's uh, holding the voltage at uh, 10 volts, even though we're not connected. So that's that's a handy feature, too. If you, you have a voltage that's varying a lot, you can pin it to to one position. So uh, Let's. Uh, See what the 5 volt range does. I'm going to reconfigure my precision voltage reference source here to 5 volts. And uh, let me reset it. Sometimes it doesn't reset right. Okay, so yep, 5 volts right on the money, and it's showing the voltage, the DC scale, which is really nice. And uh, I really like the way that uh, the speed on that, that impresses me. It is a 4,000 count meter, and that uh, means that it will uh, count as high as uh, 4,000 in four digits there. Now let's try something else. Let me uh, 
I have an AC supply that I will plug in and I'll be very careful with because it's could be dangerous if you're not paying attention. But uh, I'm going to set it right there and I'm going to plug it into the mains. And without changing anything on the meter, uh, we're going to test the vo AC voltage. That's 123 volts. And that's what my bench meter says, says also. Very nice. And now while, while we still have the AC uh, voltage out here, I'm going to uh, put this in non-contact voltage mode, and we'll see how that works. It's supposed to beep when it gets near it, and it does. It's showing it's a high voltage, meaning over 70 volts. Very good. The other feature it has on it is a flashlight. You can hold that down, that button, and you can see you have a flashlight. It's not extremely bright. Let me turn the lights off here so we can get a little better idea. But it's not bad. It'll do in a pinch. Uh, And to kill that, you just push it again and hold it, and the light comes off. Now you can also, uh, it has a 15-minute timer on it, which uh, I like that it's that long. A lot of my other meters only have a 10-minute timer, and I'm forever trying to reset it so it doesn't lose the reading. But uh, this one has a 15-minute timer that you can... Uh, uh, disable by just holding down the H button here and hitting the power button. And that puts it in auto and, and you'll notice the little timer indicator is gone now. So this will stay on until the batteries run down. And to uh, reset it to normal, just repower it. Right there. So, yeah, that's, uh, I'm quite impressed for an $11 voltmeter. Uh, it's not really built for a professional use. Uh, it will not test transistors or diodes or uh, capacitors, uh, but it will read volts AC and DC, ohms, and continuity. Now, that's another thing I wanted to test to see all right, where the continuity level is. So I'm going to put this in the jig again. Let me get a uh, uh, resistor substitution box, and uh, we'll see how low it can go before it uh, stops or starts chirping. All right, I have my resistor substitution box here. And let's just poke the leads in there and see you what we're reading. I didn't pre-configure this, so I don't know what the resistance is. Setting it says 10 meg ohms on, on my button here, and it's, as you can see, it's reading around 10, 10 meg ohms with the M on it. So let's go to a lower range, and uh, we'll start out at uh, 220 ohms. Okay, there's 220 ohms. And we'll go to 150 and 100 and down to 68 and 47. And that's where it starts the continuity. It still reads the uh, resistance, but it does set off the uh, alert that you have continuity. So, uh, According to the book, I, I believe it starts around 50 ohms is uh, where the uh, continuity will start indicating. Now, uh, one thing about it, when you get on the low ohm scale, it, it always reads it in kilo ohms. So you're going to have to kind of convert 0 
seven uh, relates to 70 ohms. And so when you get up here to the higher ranges, it's still going to read 0.170 for 170 ohms because it's on the kilo ohm scale. Uh, if we go over to, let's make it 1500 ohms. Now it's uh, 1.6 thousand ohms. So that scale does not adjust. Uh, I don't really like that about it, but uh, that's the way it is. Other than that, not having a current or capacitor test, uh, I kind of like the meter. I think I'll throw it in my uh, tool bag as a uh, standby meter or something. The, when I go out on a call or something, I can just take that along right quick, and it'll uh, probably tell me everything I need to know on site. So let me grab a diode. I want to see if it'll test a diode. Okay, I have a... Uh, power rectifier diode here. Let's see what happens when... Okay, it's showing 14 million ohms in that direction, which is open. Let's see if it's got enough to trigger it. And 400 ohms in that one. So you really could test diodes with this. Uh, it's a front-back checker, just one way you'll have around uh, 400K, and the other way, uh, it's almost infinity when you're looking on the 8 million ohm range. So you can, in a pinch, test a diode with it. Uh, but I don't think uh, you'd have much luck testing capacitors or transistors with it. So anyway, other than the... Uh, Battery cover not having a captive screw and no kickstand. Uh, really not a not much bad I can say about this. It's a nice little meter. Um, it, again, it's not for the professional use. It's more for a beginner or a, a handyman. But for the price, you can't beat it. And as I mentioned before, this is an unpaid review. So I'm not getting anything for it other than I get to keep the product afterwards. So if you want to buy one of these, uh, you can pick it up at Amazon. There's a link below in the description. And also you can get a coupon code where you can get a little bit of a price break on this. So once again, thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.